Good morning, everyone. I'm truly excited to be part of this wonderful event, alas, remotely. This year marks the seventh anniversary of the Precision Medicine Conference, an event that I have come to look forward to, first as a faculty member at Harvard Medical School and now as dean. Today's session is extra meaningful because it will tackle one of the most critical and most urgent topics of our time. Today, we will discuss not only race and ethnicity in the practice of medicine, but race and ethnicity in our collective quest to realize the promise of precision medicine. As scientists, physicians, and public health researchers, we've long been aware of the racism and deep inequities in our society, inequities that affect health and disease in powerful ways. For far too long, our society, and in many ways, the medical profession, has operated under the faulty and dangerous notion that race and ethnicity are a proxy for biology. The pandemic has reminded us with unsparing brutality that race is not a biological construct, but a social one. COVID-19 has exposed systemic and socioeconomic pathologies that have little to do with an individual's ancestry and a lot to do with where and how they grew up. The disproportionate disease burden borne by communities of color does not stem from differences in biology. Rather, it is the result of deeply rooted inequities, inequities that increase the risk of exposure to SARS-CoV-2, inequities that compromise access to health care, inequities that have rendered Black, Latino, and Indigenous people more likely to suffer from cardiovascular illness, diabetes, metabolic dysfunction, respiratory disease, conditions that amplify the risk for severe COVID-19. To be clear, the idea that race, ethnicity, and socioeconomic factors intersect with health is not new. There are long documented differences in life expectancy between wealthier and poorer zip codes across United States cities. This complex interplay between environment, biology, and pathophysiology is at the heart of precision medicine. For what is precision medicine, if not the ability to deliver the correct diagnosis, make the most accurate risk prediction, recommend the most prudent prevention, and prescribe the best tailored treatment to the right person at the right time based on the constellation of factors that shape individuals' health? Our first panel, we'll discuss this very topic. Recent advances in genetic science have brought genomic tools to the fore of clinical disease management and risk prediction, justly so. But at the same time, we must not fall prey to the allure of genetic determinism, the over-reliance on genetics to gauge disease risk and prescribe treatment. We know that for the vast majority of health conditions, Genetics is but one of a multitude of variables that shape outcome. Access to healthcare, the quality of the air one breathes, the purity of the water one drinks, the type of food one eats, the amount of sleep, exercise, and stress, these all affect health and disease in ways that have nothing to do with one's DNA. To move precision medicine forward, and to ensure that we deliver the right care to the right individual at the right time, we must find ways to better measure the role of environmental, social, and cultural contributions to disease and health. I look forward to the insights of our discussants on this panel. One of them I should note is Harvard Medical School alumnus Herman Taylor. Herman's work has been dedicated to the study of cardiovascular disease, its biology, its pathophysiology, and its epidemiology. Our next panel will delve into the use of identity in current medical practice, reminding us of the dangers of applying averages and coarse labels to capture differences across populations. What need will look further than race-adjusted kidney function calculators or race-adjusted breast cancer risk estimates to realize just how deeply entrenched in our daily practice this is. Such race-adjusted formulas and scores are only a few examples of the vestiges of race-based medicine that persist in our supposedly more enlightened, evidence-based 21st century. There is an acute need to develop more refined clinical tools 
that ensure both performance and equity in clinical care. We must base such new tools on biomarkers that accurately, reliably, and consistently capture differences and truly individualize care and propel precision medicine forward. This is a critical conversation indeed, and will be the focus of our second panel's discussion. With contributions from yet another illustrious HMS alum, Neil Poe. Neil's work unites the fields of basic biology, clinical nephrology, and public health into the study of kidney disease epidemiology and clinical management. I look forward to hearing his insights from these fields. No conversation about precision medicine would be complete without addressing what is arguably the greatest scientific disruption poised to reshape the practice of medicine, advances in computational science. As recently as 10 years ago, the idea of AI in the clinic was used as theoretical exploration, the stuff of science fiction. Today, tools powered by machine learning are beginning to enter frontline medicine, forcing us to confront the question, how do we make algorithms more reliable so that we can ensure a more equitable use of AI in the clinic? This is the topic of our third panel today, and the importance of this, this discussion cannot be overstated. Machine learning can help mitigate many biases, but it presents some inherent dangers as well. Data sets used to train machine learning models that lack diversity can lead to the design of flawed algorithms that can propagate existing biases at an unprecedented scale. But combating bias goes well beyond feeding representative data into our AI models. What is building the algorithms? Who and how they are tested, designed, deployed, and validated? Are errors examined on average or across groups? The promise goes hand in hand with the peril, and the latter is lurking every step of the way. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, AI tools should be designed to represent and reflect the goals and needs of the populations they are intended to serve. To achieve that, we must bring to the table the researchers and experts, but also the members of underrepresented communities. It is the ideas and perspectives of these communities that are the most invaluable in informing our work. They are the true experts. There's an enormous amount of confusion surrounding the use of race and ethnicity in medicine. Today's conversation is an opportunity to clarify this confusion. This is why the ideas and collaboration that today's discussions will spark are so important. And I'd like to pause right here and thank the person who brought us here together to have these critical conversations, the organizer of this event, Zach Kahani, the founding chair of the Department of Biomedical Informatics at Harvard Medical School. This pandemic has exposed the lethal effects of chronic societal problems we have failed to resolve for far too long. COVID-19 continues to reveal the underlying inequities that profoundly shape health and disease in our world. Over the last 20 or so years, insights into human biology, genomics, and computational science have brought the realization of the promise of precision medicine closer to reality. It is my hope that as we move forward with our collective search for better ways to individualize care, we will also find ways to measure individual differences in disease and health that transcend outdated, crude labels, defy easy definitions, and capture the true depth and richness of our collective humanity. That would be one small but critical step toward greater equity in our society and ultimately across the world. Thank you.